Hi, my name is Niklas Dahl. I'm a professor of clinical genetics at Uppsala University in Sweden. Uh, my main interest is to identify gene variants behind genetic disorders and in this particular project we have identified the genetic background to uh, the Lander distal myopathy. This map of Scandinavia uh, with Sweden in the middle uh, indicate the distribution of the disorder uh, mainly in the middle part of Sweden and western part of Finland. The geographical distribution and uh, the fact that the disorder is not described elsewhere in the world suggest a founder effect for the Lander distal myopathy and a very strong such founder effect. <laughs> we will now introduce you to the phenotype in the Lander distal myopathy. This patient is 55 years old and she started to have symptoms from age 40, about first in the hands, later from the feet. Here is a typical uh, finding, unequal power of different extensors, index finger and thumb weaker for extension. Noticeable is atrophy in the first dorsal interosseous region between the thumb and the index finger. Noticeable thinner eminence is quite flat with, with muscle atrophy. And there is weakness for abduction of the thumb. But there is good power for flexion of the fingers. Yeah. Okay. The patient has uh, difficulties with fine motor skills like uh, zippers, Hi, my name is Joachim Klar. I'm a researcher. I'm working with the genetic analysis of patients with Willander's distal myopathy. Although linkage was established to chromosome 2 already in 1999, no candidate gene could be identified. By using microsatellite markers and segregation analysis, we were able to identify a shared haplotype in all affected individuals. The haplotype is specific to this patient group as we could not find it in any of the controlled chromosomes studied. The haplotype spans approximately 1.5 megabases and contains a little over 30 known genes. We performed exome sequencing on two individuals and were able to identify a single shared heterozygous variant within the chromosome 2 region. The variant was also excluded from 300 in-house exomes available. It could be seen to segregate within the families and was confirmed in all patients. The variant is a G to A transition in the TIA1 gene. The TIA1 gene encodes the RNA binding protein T cell intracellular antigen 1. As shown in A, TIA1 protein contains four functional domains free RNA recognition motifs and a Q-rich domain known to interact with the U1C of the spliceosome as shown in figure B. The mutation is situated within this Q-rich domain. We hypothesized that this would lead to a reduced interaction of TIA1 to the U1C. One known target of TIA1 is the SMN2 transcript. And as shown in C, we show that the mutation leads to an increased alternative splicing, which includes a skipping of exon 7. Since TIA1 interacts with a very large number of different transcripts, we believe that these mutations results in a general defect of transcription and translation, leading to cellular stress. 